Hey everybody, Ben F. The Better Podcast, and welcome to Theory Thursday. On a Thursday, we get together and we have a look at one specific thing in Blood Bowl. We take a bit of a deep dive, whether it's stats or strats. The goal here is to understand this game we love and potentially play it a little bit better. Now, that's very much the theme of the day today, because what we're going to be talking about is coach levels. This is not a mechanical thing. This is not a thing that's in the game. This is about you as a player. What we're going to do is we're going to kind of categorize the different stages on your way to becoming a Blood Bowl Pro so that you can kind of help figure out where you are, where you want to be, and what you need to do to get there. Okay, so what are you talking about, Ben? So I was out for a walk with Liberty the other day and I was like, well, I was looking at some of the comments on YouTube and we get a couple of different types of comments. One are really, really lovely where people are like, this is really helpful. Thank you. I've never considered this. Thank you. Like, this is useful. Thank you. I look at this when I'm playing a game or specifically the setups that go down really well. And the other one is when we play games or when we do reviews of star players or teams, you get people flagging up the edge cases, which I always love to hear. Because that means that that person has gone, mm, what you could have done in that situation is that. Or, well, yes, most of the time that's correct advice, but one time out of ten you're going to want to do this instead. And that got me thinking about why those people are saying those things. And I'm like, yeah, that's exactly where we want you to be. We want to get you to that level where you understand how things are nine out of ten times, but that you can step back and go, right, Actually, the right thing to do right now is the wrong thing for this reason. I am more comfortable. I am confident enough in my Blood Bowl knowledge that I'm going to do something that seems counterintuitive or that may not be what you would normally do. And it got me thinking about, right, how can you kind of categorize where you are on your Blood Bowl journey? Now, this is specifically for competitive play. And what I mean by that is you're playing to win the game. When we get to a certain level, I'll talk about when you make choices for fun, because that may be who you are. And that's the beautiful thing about Blood Bowl, is that you've got the triad of hobby here. One, you've got painting. If you love to create, paint art, make cool teams, painting. Two, you've got the gameplay. You've got the competitive thing, right? Can I beat you? Can I wrangle my players on the pitch to score a win? And the third one is the narrative. I'm running a league team. I've got a story here. What's going to be more fun? What's going to be the story? And that's super important. And you kind of find yourself on that triad. You find yourself on that axis. But today, this is kind of about the competitive stuff. Playing to win, not win at all costs, because get in the bin, but playing to win. So, Level zero, muggle. We're not going to talk about muggles. Those are the uninformed. Those are the 40k players, the magic players. Those are what we should really refer to as the unsaved souls. Those people who don't really know much about Blood Bowl, maybe don't even know anything about Blood Bowl. If you find those people and you think you can convert them, do it because more Blood Bowl is more better. But what we'll do is we'll start our journey here. One, rookie. This is people who are just starting to play the game. And what we're going to do is from levels one through to five, we'll talk about how you kind of categorize yourself in that and what the next step is. So rookie, starting out, experienced. I know how the game works. Three, I know why the game works. Four, I know when to do something different. And five, just a pro at the game. So muggles, bless them. Rookie, you're starting out, experienced, you know how the game works, you can make good decisions. Veteran, you know a lot about the game. Elite, you've experienced a lot of the game and pro is just the pro level. Now before we dive in, you can kind of see the story as we go through, but a lot of our viewers will be between three and four. So we want to get people to level three because that's the divergence point. We want you to understand how the game works. We want you to make good decisions. We want you to understand the game theory and learn things, set up, set plays. Well, how can I do this? How can I do this? And once you're at that point, you kind of make a choice. Do I go elite? Do I cram in? Do I do all the stuff I need to do? Or do I take the fact that I know what a good decision is 
and YOLO it anyway because it's more entertaining. That's what I'm here for. And that's the divergent points. So the channel, we tend to get people to level three because that's the point at which you need to then choose what you want to do. If you want to see pro play, you go watch Handy Dave though. You want to watch fun YOLO stuff, that's kind of where we hear. We kind of get to that point and we start doing silly things because it's quite entertaining. So anyway, onwards to level one, rookie. So this is those players, maybe you, who are just starting out on your Blood Bowl journey. If this is you, hello and welcome. This is without a shadow of an out, the best tabletop game out there with the best, the best community, the best third party support. It's just the best. Blood Bowl's the best. Now, those of you who are just starting out on your Blood Bowl journey, there's a ton of things you can do to get to grips with the mechanics. But level one would be categorized as somebody who is just starting out, who is just about to learn the mechanics, who is just learning all of the rules in the game, learning what is what. And it's very fast to level up from here. So if you are starting out and you've played Blood Bowl 2 before, you've played Blood Bowl 1 on the Nintendo DS, you used to play in 1988 with a cool polystyrene pitch, there's a ton of ways you can get into Blood Bowl. Blood Bowl 3 is not a terrible one to do it. It's not the best. There is no replacement for sitting down across from a friend or watching some of our videos to learn the game. But one thing I will say, and people often glean over this, and I find this fantastic to remind people of. The rules are the rules are the rules. However, there's a lot of rules in there. You're going to get some wrong. You're going to read it and it's going to mean something different to you than it means to somebody else. There is an ever going rules understanding journey for absolutely everybody. But level one really is about, right, how do I even play the game? And then you kind of level up very quickly to stage two, which is kind of why you play the game. And level two, we classify as experienced. I did start off with like the Blood Bowl levels. Uh, and then I lost my way because that's how the world works. So you're an experienced player now. You understand the mechanics. And what I mean by that is you understand how dodging works. You understand how blocking works. You know how things work. You know how your team works. You probably know how your opponent's team works. You know, you understand how the kickoff goes. You understand the game. You understand the rules of the game. And that you can solidify yourself into uh, level two very, very, very quickly. Honestly, Blood Bowl, pick up a game, play some drives, play some Blood Bowl three. Once you've played a test session, maybe a sevens game, once you've played one or two full games of Blood Bowl, you are well into level two now. OK, I understand how blocking works. I know how to make good mechanical choices. Now, that is a very attractive sentence but what that means is i know how to make a good choice when it comes to the dodges i know that if i run through those tackle zones i'm gonna struggle but if i bounce out and run around i'm gonna do better i know that if i stack my players up in this order i can get better blocks you know how to win in individual scenarios on the pitch which is a massive massive growth point and if you're starting out in blood bowl and you're like oh actually you know what if I move this guy here, I get a two die block. And then if I don't follow up, I get another two die block. That's making good mechanical choices. And that is when you are at level two. Most of our viewership will start at this point here, I think. This is where people come in. I've played Blood Bowl. I know Blood Bowl. I know how it works. I know how it works on the pitch. And you find yourself able to confidently and competently play turn by turn. Now, there's a reason I've separated that off from level three, which we'll come to in a second. But when I say play turn by turn, you look at the pitch, you understand the good blocks, you understand the good dodges, you understand the good things to do. But at this point, your ability to see what it's going to be like in two turns, what it's going to be like next turn, how am I going to force my opponent to do this is starting to grow. What you are able to do is, OK, I've got some good blocks here. I want to move the ball up to there. OK, and then we'll see what happens. And that's not a bad place to be. Everybody starts there. Everybody goes through there. And this is the big difference between level two, which I would probably say is a casual Blood Bowl player, someone who can play Blood Bowl. This is where you are at the point where you yeah, I know how to play Blood Bowl. And you are learning your own play style while you're doing it. So 
you know how to play Blood Bowl and you're starting to get to grips with, right, what do I enjoy? I enjoy smashing. And the good mechanical choices that you enjoy will lean you towards this. So if you are at the point where you are now a level two coach, what is it that you like doing? Is it the clever chain blocks that you've just figured out how to do? Is it the nice way you can get a push into a good dodge and dash through with the ball? Is it being able to throw and make a cool pass? The things that you enjoy doing, the things that click with you well when you're looking at making good mechanical choices will influence the teams that you enjoy playing. And that's the real nuts and bolts. That's where your journey properly begins. You start to build your identity as a coach. Oh, I like it. I like this. I love playing with my Black Orcs. I love Black Orcs. They're wicked. I can pound this guy, pound this guy and slowly brew up. And I've got Elves and I've got Skaven. I don't really like them quite so much because you don't have enough punch. And I like I like the maths of that or versus I like the, the excitement of dodging. That's when you start to kind of build up how you are going to be um, yeah, kind of what kind of a coach you're going to be. And the knowledge level up is where this is beginning. And I guess the biggest thing, you go from one to two, you learn to play the game. You play a few games. Getting from two to three, this is where the biggest and brightest wins go. Because if you're level two, I understand how the game works. I can play a turn of Blood Bowl. Uh, I know what I kind of want to do. I'm enjoying doing stuff and I know how the game works. And I don't mean to disparage anybody. So I know how to play the game. But level three is when you learn how to play the game and that is when you become a veteran so let's get my points up on screen you have a plan now my favorite magic player of all time lsv always says whenever you're drafting whenever you're playing magic the gathering you, you've got to have a plan you want to know what you want to do and the difference here between your level two coach and your level three coach is you have a game plan you have a game strategy when you go into it you know that you are playing orcs versus skaven all right I'm good at bashing, I'm good, I'm strong, I'm mid-range, I'm going to be able to get some good removal. Their game plan is going to be able to do this. And the way you get from level 2 to level 3 is by experience, but also by learning. And the difference here between 2 to 3 and 3 to 4 is 3 to 4, you really can only get there by playing and jamming and learning the game. 2 to 3, you can study, and that's what we do here on the channel. You can watch a team breakdown. If you are coming up and it's your league game and you're playing against Nurgle, and you're like, oh, I've never played against Nurgle, what do they do? You go and watch one of our team guides where we break down the players. You go watch one of the setup guides so you can understand how they play and what their strategy is. Therefore, when you line up against them on the pitch, you know their strengths, you know their weaknesses, you know your strengths, you know your weaknesses, and that's going to enable it. What is it? Sun Tzu, Art of War. If you know yourself but not your enemy, you'll lose half the time. If you know your enemy but not yourself, you'll lose all the time. And if you know your enemy and you know yourself, you'll win more than you lose. I think that's what they said. To be honest, I got that from a Sabaton song. So that is kind of where you get to this level three point. And this is what I love going through. This is, it's not basics. This is advanced stuff. Basics is, hey, this is how you do block math. The advanced stuff is, this is this team strength versus this. How do they pair up? What are your setups going to be? And this is why I love doing the setup videos is because that is such a huge edge. If you're a level two player going up against a level two player, you're going to line up, you're going to put some dudes down and you're just going to see what happens. Level three, you've watched a setup video. You understand that actually the best thing you can do in this situation is a deep anchor defense when you set up because you want to protect your passes and keep your blitzers loose at the back. You're going to go double column here with your strength four pieces up front to stop them from breaking through and you can collapse through. You can start building this. You know you've got two turns to score, so I'm going to go for a strong flank offense and see if we can't YOLO it. That's when you understand the bigger aspects of the game. Level two is what can I do? Level three is how can I make that more advantageous? Setups and set piece plays. In fact, I would say level three is where you kind of go, hmm, how do I do a one turn touchdown? If you've sat there and gone, oh man, I love this team. I can probably pull off a one turn touchdown. How am I going to do that? How do I frenzy push? That's where you are. You're a level three player. Congratulations. And I guess the key here is consistent plays for a level three coach. If you know that most of the time you are going to be able to make the right decisions, you are going to be able to make the right risks and you're willing to kind of 
put yourself out there but make consistent plays level three coaches make less mistakes than level two coaches you play you do the safe things you take the safe blocks you play with a little bit more patience because you are knowing that this is not one turn this is one half that you're playing if i do this and i protect this i've got next turn next turn i can follow up next turn i can do this you start getting that next turn mentality and that's the difference between tactics and strategy you've got a tactical situation this is where things are your strategy is this is where i want things to be how do i get there and having that patience as well so making consistent plays and being patient with it and the knowledge of the greater game and that's what i mean by right studying the star players studying your inducements studying your opponent's team you don't have to do that to enjoy blood bowl this is not 40k but damn if you like blood bowl you can study and you can enjoy because you start playing out those situations in your head you're like right i got underworld and i'm going up against an ogre team okay what are ogres good at how do they work what are my setups going to be like how do i do this that would be cool what if they're running bomber how do i take bomber out what if i'm running hack what if i'm running skitter and you start building that knowledge of the greater game so you turn up to a league night and you're like well i know what my inducements can be and i know what will be good that's kind of the difference between a level two and a level three player level two is like oh let's see how this goes let's enjoy it and i love it but level three is okay i know this i've studied i get what's going on here now to get yourself to level two all you have to do is study observe tinker watch some videos just care about the game and enjoy the game if you enjoy blood bowl you will hoon yourself from two to three in no time and you'll find yourself struggling to not want more we get people to level three nice and quickly because all you have to do is enjoy the game and want to know more and you will get to level three you'll understand oh yeah no i saw this i get that set up yeah i understand why we do this oh i can do a chain push you will get that because you'll want it the difference between three and four and this is when i said is kind of the divergence point is this is where you choose where you put your time and what i mean by that is i love orcs what do i want to do do you know what i want to get real good with orcs or i enjoyed playing orcs i want to try undead i want to try snotlings i want to try skaven because they're cool and different and you kind of start to build again an, another element of your coach identity is it consistency is it uh, mastering a specific thing or is it enjoying a varied thing because this is where i found myself diverging from the uh, i love skaven and i'm pretty good with skaven but i love unique situations this is why i love sevens this is why i love magic the gathering draft this is why i love bonehead bowl because you get mixed teams and it's just this is new i love new i love exploring so i would play a season with one team and i'd switch to a different team and i'd play another season with a different team and i'd jam a bunch of games with this team and learn it just because i'd like to be a level three with every team and i think you can see that on the channel i have my strength is being able to play any team pretty well i don't make the most consistent plays especially not on the channel because i'd rather win three nil and risk losing three nil than win one nil it's just i don't know like especially for the channel i want to it's really quite i don't know just i find it very exciting that was my choice what i could be doing though is playing every week with my team that i love to learn it to become as good as possible and that's how you'll get to level four with a team that's how you as a player will get to level four is by experience by getting the reps in because that's the only way you will get beyond veteran which is not a bad place to be because you can take any team at a veteran level and you can beat any other team at a veteran level but if you want to become really really good you have to play a lot of games and your reward will be that you become an elite player at level three we said you have a strategy and you understand the right plays to make you understand how to make consistent how to make the safe things how to make good choices how to do the standard things you're you, you've got the idea of right playing this team versus this team this is a good setup for that oh, i'm going to try the anchor for this i'm going to do this i know what is normally good in this situation the difference between level three and level four when you get to being an elite player is you've played out so many situations that you understand 
when not to do the normal thing. And this is where we get those brilliant comments on the channel that's like, well, this star player is not good in this circumstance because of this and this. And that's why I love seeing, because if you know when we're wrong, when we're generalizing, you've got yourself to this point. And that is fantastic. So if you've ever watched any of our videos, strategies, games, whatever, and you've looked at it and you've gone, Poof, that was stupid, or I wouldn't do that, I'd do this instead, or yeah, fair enough, but in this circumstance, do this, you're here. That's fantastic. If you can get to the point when you know when to break the rules, then you're in a really, really strong place. And that is a rule for life, actually. And this is something that I've seen. I've done management in, in all sorts of places. And um, you have the people who don't have a clue what they're doing. Good job. Then you have the people who understand the role and the job and what they need to do. And they will just do that. Then you understand and then you see the people who understand what they're supposed to do, but they know when it's better to do not what they're supposed to do. We used to call it Captain Kirking because this is exactly why Captain Kirk is fantastic because he will absolutely do the right thing, right thing, right thing. OK, uh, the right thing would be to do this, but I can do this instead and it's going to be better for everybody. It's being able to take yourself a little bit out, a little bit out of consistency, a little bit out of right. What's the normal thing to do here? What's the right thing to do here? Knowing when to break the rules is going to give you extra equity in that situation. And it's just fantastic. And on top of that, and I guess combined with that, is counterplays. So I just talked about uh, setups. In this situation, I'm going to put out a column defense because you've got two turns to score, and that's going to give me, on the defense, the best chance to do that. Okay. Ping it back. Counterplay. Oh, great. Right. They play a column defense. Through playing against a column defense 20 times, I know that with this team, the best way to counter that is to do this. Okay, they've gone column defense. Uh, best attack would be, right, what they're trying to do is stop me from going out the edges and slow me down. So what I need to do is deploy heavy center, swing through the middle, make a counter play. And what we do in a lot of our setup videos is we go, right, most of the time, this defense is the right thing to do against this defense. When you get to this level, you can go, OK, except in this situation, I think it would be better to do this. Punch through the middle, spread out, slow down. And that's when you get to the point of counterplays, which you do, generally speaking, only get from experience. And you can learn a lot of it from watching games. But because Blood Bowl has such a mass of infinite, unique situations, you have to learn the edge cases. We can teach you 80% of the normal stuff, but that last 20%, you have to kind of find yourself by doing just that, playing it through. And OK, I've also put bait tactics here as well, because this is something that eh, might be more level three, because it's a lot of the cases, the, the proper thing to do. But bait tactics is when you can. This is something I really enjoy. And if you can pull this off, it does leave you feeling very lovely because you can set up and you can put a situation on the board that is unusual you can do counterplays you can you can mess with your opponent's mind right they think i'm going to do this uh so what we're going to do is we're going to do this because what you do is if you refresh the situation every time if you deploy in a different way i guarantee most of the time your opponent's going to go okay they're going to go here they're going to try and do this they're going to do this all right when they do that i'm going to do this and that's your kind of level three to level four right what's my next play going to be and then you go and do something different you do a counterplay. you do something they're not expecting they have to restart their mind they go, that is different. I need to recalculate. And that's how you make them make mistakes. And the second sneaky thing to do is bait tactics. And there's two ways of doing this. One is a false flag, right? Putting something out there that's just not true. It's, I, oh no, I've positioned that player out of that sort. I've made a mistake there. You don't necessarily have to say it. That makes you, you know. I don't know. If you're close friends with someone, definitely do it. If you're playing a tournament or league, don't be that guy. But absolutely leave a player out of position. Bait your opponent into thinking that you've made a mistake when actually you can kind of set up for it. If they go, ooh, they've left their gutter runner loose. That's silly. I might take that blitz. What you're doing is you're distracting them from their game plan. You're giving them 
the opportunity to do something that doesn't fit in with their strategy and waste activations. And that's what I mean by bait tactics. You can set up like you've made a mistake or, and I love this, is the power play of bait where you just give them a really good shot. And then <laughs> they get the kind of double think of like, that's really obvious. Why have they left that wide open? That seems really weird. And you can get into your opponent's head and they're like, okay, well, I'm going to take it and see if it, and it's just, it's brilliant. You start readjusting their strategy. So really, level two, don't have much of a strategy. Level three, I've got my playing strategy, my winning strategy. Level four is how do I tilt their winning strategy? And I think that's just the most wonderful point of Blood Bowl. And then you've got the non-plays. So we talked about consistency. We talked about the consistent plays at level three. Level four is when you, you learn to make non-plays. And it can feel a bit rubbish. And this is something that you will see from the really great players like Andy Davo and stuff. I'll be watching it and I'll be like, oh man, come on, you want to base that guy? Get him up. Come on, move forward. You know, do the stuff. Get it there. Get aggressive. Sometimes it's better to just not activate stuff. Sometimes it's better to just decrease the risk make super consistent plays and just leave stuff trips bless his heart is a very aggressive player when it comes to uh, corn and stuff like that so you'll see for some of his games he will block a little too much and we do talk to him about it and he's like i can't resist the bloodlust you know skulls for the skull god non-plays will sometimes be the best you can feel like you're leaving EV on the pitch. You can feel like you can you feel like you're missing an opportunity. But sometimes that two die block you don't need to take. It's not always. And the only way you'll get to that point of knowing when it's the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do is by jamming a bunch of games and realizing that sometimes making no play there is the right thing. Because let's let's think about that very that situation very quickly. You've got a two die block. You don't take that two die block. Well, now your opponent could bring a friend round and they can make a one die block or they can bring two friends round into that situation and get a two die block on you. Okay, you've just baited them into three activations of their 11 man team, assuming you haven't removed anybody. Well, that's nearly 30% of their players have now been activated to take a meaningless block. You give them that bait, you give them that opportunity and by taking a non-play, you adjust and affect their moves. Delicious. And the only way you progress beyond this and to this is repetition and experience. And whether that is, I'm gonna absolutely smash all my games with Black Orcs because they're great, or I just want to learn to play the game and I wanna play loads with loads of teams. The more games you play, the more edge cases you will learn. It's like an incline, okay? It doesn't take much to get here, but to get here it takes a lot of effort. But then you get to the level of pro. Elite is a wonderful place to be. The guys who win tournaments, they are elite. They know how to bait. They know how to get that extra EV. They know the right things to do. And they know the wrong things to do and the right things to do the wrong things. That The right times to do the wrong things. That's the key. Coaches at level five, the pros are just straight up next level there are not very many pros out there andy davo is a pretty good example of one although blood tide did finish higher than him in, in, in the last tournament which was pretty good and we talked about counter plays but they will counter the counter plays they will smash out the bait tactics they will make those non-plays and they will get there from repetition and experience this looks exactly the same as level four because the difference here is just experience and that is the baffling thing. You can get to level four in your mind with most teams by playing 20 games. But what you do when you've played 20,000 games, which I don't know if that's even possible. There's some, there's some crazy fumble stats out there. Is level five is just different. And this is what I love about Magic the Gathering. And I think we've talked about this before, uh, especially when it comes to the meta of a tournament. I thought we talked about it in the podcast last week, didn't we? Okay, what's the best team at the moment? What's the best deck at the moment? Okay, uh, what's the deck that's going to beat that deck? Because most people are going to want to take that deck to beat that deck. And that's level three and level four. You want to know at level four how you beat the people who are playing correctly at level three. 
I trust my player is going to, my opponent is going to make the right choices. So how do I use that to my advantage? Then you've got level five to level four. I know that my opponent is going to trust me to make the right choices. And I know that I'm going to trust them to make the wrong choices at the right times for my team. I am already thinking, what are they going to try and get me to think? And you cannot teach this. You can teach theory, you can teach tactics, and you can teach setups and good maths and right decisions. You cannot teach experience. Experience will get you to a really great place and theory will get you to a really great place. But if you want to be a pro, the only way you can do that is by playing a lot and a lot and a lot of games. And I don't think it's very achievable for a lot of people to get to this point. And that's fine. I don't want to be at this point. But I love that there are some players out there that are at this point and it's just so interesting to see one great player go up against another great player and you can kind of see where they are all right we've got a good player here they're a solid level three they understand the game they understand the stuff they understand the tactics you've got a level four who's played enough to know how to kind of use that to their advantage and then you've got this level five pro that can just bait make non-plays, make counter-plays. And sometimes they feel like they are barely playing at all because their positioning is using their opponent's play style against them. And that is just absolutely wonderful. And I'm sorry to say, we'll probably never have that on the channel. We'll have some great threes, some great fours playing against each other, whether they're doing tournament coverage or in our league games. And if you're watching them, you'll be able to go, I understand why they did that. Or, oh, they could have done this different. If we can get you to the point, and if you can get you to the point where you're watching a game, watching something on this channel, and you're like, mm, I would have done something different there. Even if you're right, even if you're wrong, you are thinking, okay, what if there's a different way? I think I've got an alternative. I think I can do better than that. And it doesn't matter whereabouts you are on your Blood Bowl journey. If you start thinking like that, you're going to get two things. You understand the game right. And if you're right, you're right. If you're wrong, you'll learn why you're wrong. And that's more learning. And more learning is even more better than more Blood Bowl. But for now, I'm going to wrap up. Thank you very much for watching. Please let me know what level you think you are in the comments below. I want to see loads of people being like, level 5 pro, Ben. Level 5 pro. Um, and more specifically, please let us know if there's something you want us to spend some more time on in the channel. Things are stabilizing. The studio is nearly set up. It's about to get really good for Blood Bowl in our little world. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back soon with more Blood Bowl content. Happy blocking. Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you want to support the channel even further, please like and subscribe. It really does help us out. Or come join us on YouTube members or in Patreon, where you can get exclusive access to some content, some loot, early access to basically everything we do, as well as regular competitions. Or you can pick up some Bonehead Podcast loot either on our website at boneheadpodcast.com. We've got the Dungeon Bowl things. We've got tokens and stuff like that. Or on our Spreadshirt site as well. Everything you do just helps us make more content and hopefully do it of better quality. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Happy blocking.